Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video, we're going to talk about Lucky Larry's 55 Ragtop. An update. Let's go check it out. Okay, Larry's 55. We are nearing completion, guys. I honestly think I could possibly have this thing running by next week. Uh, as we're looking right now, last time I showed you, we did not have the beauty rims on, we didn't have the hubcaps on, um, we didn't have the windows in. Larry opted, of course, for the pop-out windows. These pop-outs that come out here. Uh, we got the oval window in here. And I already started on his interior. I'm leaving the doors to last because it is a dreadful job, but um, as long as you take your time, you should be okay. Let's take a peek inside. You see we started assembling the dashboard. We got his restored batwing steering wheel on there. We got his restored uh, speedometer in there. Of course, we clock it back to zero. We got a speaker grill in, the big M Motorola radio, many people like that. Uh, rare dash grab handle, they, they normally did not have these grab handles in these years, so that was dealer option stuff, and if you can have an original like that, pretty cool. So, uh, still working on some of the other accessories uh, for his dashboard, we're getting them ready. His Denny gas gauge and some of the uh, washer pumps and things like that that he had lights. But we, we will be getting to that shortly, but... Let's show you the interior. Of course, I always go with my parcel shelves and I go with my little storage baskets. And here's the German square weave carpet. If anybody wants to know what this is, this is called Gray Beige uh, by Wolfsburg West. I get that from them. Um, what's really funny is that I do not usually see this swatch of this carpet on their website. I actually have to, you know, put a note in there that I want the Gray Beige. And uh, this is what they send me. I usually opt for this or the tan. When it comes to carpet in these years, for the 55 and earlier, all you really have is the carpet on the tunnel. You got the carpet on the heater channel sections. You got the front firewall with the rubber mat. And if you tell Wolfsburg West you want the rubber mat, they'll sew it for you. Um, and then the side piece carpets. And then of course you get the three piece carpet in the back behind the back seat. I, if I can show you here. Okay, so you got over the wheel hump and on this side as well. So usually that's the size kit you get. Most of the TMI kits that are on the market today, they'll give you the carpet, you know, even onto the floor pan areas. Originally that's not what what what, what the case was. Uh, you have to buy the black rubber mats separate. Let's talk about seatbelts here. Um, people ask me about seatbelts. Many of the people that want uh, me to restore a car for them of course, want me to put seatbelts in for them. And what you see here are, I just get a lap belt. You can buy this kit from uh, CIP1, CIP1. They give you the two piece lap belt. And then you can buy the sticker that goes into the circular uh, section here, which is it's a pretty nice, it's a nice seatbelt actually, to be honest, and it's pretty inexpensive. But originally these cars did not have seatbelts, so what to do? Uh, some states do require you to have seatbelts, some states do honor the vintage car and uh, you do not have to have them, but to play safe, we get them. Now where do you bolt them? I usually like to bolt them right behind the seat rails. So if you look, here's the end of the seat rail. Uh, you figure two, three inches away from the rail. Three inches is probably safe enough. Uh, and then, you know, you should be okay to bolt it there. And then I kind of just eyeball it straight behind this rail as well. So you can see there. I never really bolted to the actual flat part of the pan. I see people that do that. It seems pretty weak to me. Uh, you want to bolt them to these ridge, this ridge up area here. See where it ridges and it steps up on the floor pan. It's closer to the tunnel. A little more structural support there. Uh, so God forbid you did get into an accident. The strength there I think is a little bit better than uh, the floor pan here. This can actually pull. So um, I usually bolt it there and then I just do the same for the other side. People ask me what do you spray your steering wheels with? Steering column. Okay, e-brake and shifter. Usually, I used to use uh, Rust-Oleum almond paint. Um, I've been having mixed results with Rust-Oleum as of late, guys. Uh, I don't know what it is. I, I prepped the surface 
a lot. I, I, I degrease it. I uh, take all the contaminants off of it. I even go down to metal with these objects. And for some reason, the Rust-Oleum still likes to fish eye and still likes to spread and crinkle. So lately, I've been using Valspar. And I usually get that at Lowe's. And Valspar has basically an identical paint called Lovely Bluff. And that's what I have been painting my steering columns with and uh, e-brake and shifter. It's a paint and primer in one, uh, very forgiving paint, type of paint where you can spray it one day and come back the next day and if you want to give it another coat you can. Rust-Oleum, if I ever had to go the next day and do another coat, all hell used to break loose and the paint used to fail and crinkle and there was a bad chemical reaction. But Valspar seems to be very forgiving and the, uh, the finish is actually pretty nice. So uh, that's what I usually use and uh, I use this even up until I don't know, the uh, 65 years, because in 65, that's when they had the last of the, the creamy look on the, um, at least the steering wheel and the steering column. Um, but I think in 65, even the shifter was uh, black. But, um, so that's what I usually use for that. Okay, so moving on to the headliner. You know I love doing these. And of course, this is the famous three-fold ragtop. And 55 was the last of the three-folds, guys. If you can get your hand on a 55, an earlier ragtop, uh, grab them because uh, they're becoming very collectible. What I like about the threefold is that the, the opening is actually bigger than the twofold. So when you start up here from the front and come to the back, you have almost towards the end of the quarter window is the uh, opening till. When it went to twofold, it kind of scooched up a little bit to about this point. I mean, the opening is pretty similar, but the threefold is actually a bigger. Uh, opening and it's uh, really cool. I mean, I almost like these. I think I even do like these Better than a convertible because you have best of both worlds. You have the solid and rigid structure of the sedan But you have the big opening and it's just as cool Okay, so we got the headliner material from Lenny at West Coast Classic Restorations. I really like this material guys It's really soft. It feels like pool table material um, and it just has a nice little stretch to it. Uh, we're still working on the centerpiece, of course, so that's why you still see some wrinkles. But um, the, it's very forgiving material. It, it, it molds and shapes to the corners and edges really nicely. And uh, some of the best material I've ever worked with up against even the tweed material that I like to use uh, from SoFine. So um, if you have the bucks, if you have a little extra cash and you want to go with a premium headliner, that looks authentic and has some uh, real durability to it, uh, I, I would go with uh, Lenny's uh, headliner. You're probably gonna run you about three, 400 bucks though. So just be prepared to pay that. But in the end, it's gonna boost the value of your car and look that much nicer. Seat upholstery material, door panel material, uh, also came from Lenny at West Coast. And um, as you can see here, the 55 and earlier, or even all through the 50s actually, uh, the door post, as you see here and under the quarter windows match the seat upholstery uh, so when you order this kit through Lenny he'll give you the whole thing uh, ready to go so uh, you can't beat that if you also want to go through me our signature interior kits through uh, through my company classicvwbugs.com I can also do this for you as well but uh, this is actually a Lenny kit and uh, it's actually bone stock authentic to what would have been offered in 55 Okay, so last time we spoke, I was just starting to do the wiring harness. I had it all fed through the shell, uh, but I didn't actually have the wires hooked up yet. And what I want to point out to you is that 55 is like a bastard year for Volkswagen Beetle in, in the United States. Uh, they made multiple changes mid-year, um, and there was a lot of different things that got kind of mixed up. And when it comes to getting parts, sometimes you just got to make sure you got the right period or right month uh, to work with here. But... In the United States, as I spoke last time, is they went to the bullet front turn signals, okay? And that was in late 55, like around May. And this was kind of mimicking, you know, what they started doing in 56 onward here in the United States. But when we bought this wiring harness, the inside wiring harness setup on a late 55 Beetle is still kind of set up like a early 55 54 so where the fuse box mounts normally up here in the corner 
I could not use that area this time. I had to relocate it to here where they would normally have it on a 56 and later. Because the wiring harnesses that they sell today on the market for a late 55 it really doesn't exist. So they tell you to go with the 56 and 57 style harness. So I basically had to relocate the fuse box so over here, I mean, I could have put it over there and then probably just got some extra wire and lengthened it. Um, that's basically what the difference is. The wires will not reach to the fuse box over here. So this is why I relocated, relocated it to that position. So not a big deal. Uh, you know, just got to be sure to keep an eye out for, for things like that. I mean, you could download my app on the Android right now. Uh, for wiring schematics for 55, 54, 56, sevens and whatnot. But... I uh, just wanted to point that out to you because 55 is the uh, mix-up year for Volkswagen Beetle. So, Okay, so that about wraps up the Lucky Larry update on his 55 ragtop. Hopefully next time I do a video, his car's running and driving, and we'll do a test drive down the road with it. How's that sound? All right, cool. <laughs> you guys got any questions? Email me, chris at classicvwbugs.com, or visit my website, www.classicvwbugs.com. Take care.